Kingsmill, one of the uh, characteristics of most technology revolutions is that once they pass the S, the inflection point on their S curve, and now they're competitive with the the incumbent technologies, is acceleration uh, just feeds on itself, and it speeds up over time until you get a very large percentage of the market, 70, 80, 90 percent. Are we seeing that already with Electrotech? Yeah, and 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 stuff like AI is making it considerably easier. So I mean, the classic example that we all use is solar and wind get cheaper so you put solar panels up then you start to get curtailment um so you need something to solve that problem you buy batteries as you buy batteries um the cost of batteries then falls and you can increase as, as you drive up volume but you can also increase the amount of solar that you are um, able to get and then it, it 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 creates its own um, self fulfilling dynamic, and actually we're seeing this right now, as I say, with the doubling of battery storage deployment taking place every year right now. Um, I, I think that's a very uh, a very powerful flywheel. And another aspect of this, but and it's a flywheel which is which is being helped out by AI because one of the problems with that particular equation is it very rapidly gets unbelievably complex. You can't control local assets, particularly when people have um, you know millions of evs they've got plugged into the system the only way you can handle that degree of complexity is with um local controls and ai running th running stuff so again ai has kind of been as so often in in um history has been invented and coming to to market at just the right time to to be able to handle this complexity well let's talk about related enabling technologies here because ai would be one ai is a i guess a subsector a subsector a sector of uh, software uh, but we're seeing a, a innovation in all kinds of other areas like materials uh, that actually go to reinforce the electrotech revolution yeah well the, again the best one is batteries so batteries are getting denser at about um about eight five to eight percent per annum and as batteries get denser so batteries can be used in more and more applications so you know when you had the first batteries they were they they could be used in uh, uh, electric bikes and then you had light cars and, and remember milk floats um and light cars and then they could be used in light trucks and now heavy trucks and and now they're starting to penetrate um, into the shipping sector and the um, uh, airline sector. And again, it's so funny. Whenever I talk to people about this, they say, you know, it's not going to work in airlines because you can't fly to Australia tomorrow. And I'm like, you know, that's not how it worked anywhere else. You you conquer the low hanging fruit, the easy, you know, the, the flight to Paris first and then, you know, for, for four people and then you, know, you move on from there. And that's precisely what's going to happen. Um, so, yeah, the, the, the increase in density of batteries is is arguably the most important um, uh, technological development of our era. Uh, there, uh, I've used the anecdote of uh, hor uh, tractors and combines replacing horses and steam mm -hmm. tractors. And you can see exactly that thing happening where the steam tractors in the early part of the, you know, around 1900, mm -hmm. what can they do? Well, they can drive a thresher and they can break uh, uh, virgin farmland. And then you get the smaller tractor. Well, now it can do more uh, yeah. It can plant and it can plow and it can do. And then you get the bigger tractors in the 1920s and 1930s. And now they come with combines and and, yes. and it just gets, the, the innovation keeps coming and the costs keep falling. And the value, this is an important thing we don't talk about enough. The value of the, of the improving technology uh, uh, increases uh, for the adopter. It, it does. And it, but also I think this is an absolutely vital point. Um, we live in a system where 80 percent of our final energy is still coming from burning stuff and that means all of that machinery is up for um for disruption so so the value accrues, accrues to the user but the value also accrues to the people who make the kit and and on the one hand there's a massive risk with all the people who stuck with these ICE cars um, and all the values you know, accruing to the people who are making the electric vehicles. That story is going to play out right across all end uses. Yes. And uh, we, one of the things that we do here at, at Energy Media uh, as part of our energy transition journalism is track disruptions. Mm 
Yeah. And and this seems to me to be uh, something that uh, we're not paying more attention to. You know, you can see that the uh, China has already disrupted the global auto industry. I mean, that's just mm -hmm. indisputable. Mm -hmm. Even the mm -hmm. industry itself says mm -hmm. it is. But mm -hmm. then all you have to do is look upstream yep. from the auto industry and go, well, what provides the fuel? It's the oil yeah. industry. Yeah. And so it's headed for disruption in the yeah. not too distant future. And and it's those connections to other uh, industries that I think is uh, we're, we need to pay more attention to. It's underappreciated. I and mean, I have to say, I, I remember making this argument almost 10 years ago. And, and I remember saying, even the slowest analyst will be able to look at EV exponentials and, and figure out that this is going to damage the oil industry. And it turns out that I was wrong. I was wrong, and, and and there are a lot of analysts who can't figure out the math. It's completely bizarre. But anyway, um, yeah, it's it's a giant risk for the um, for, for the downstream incumbent industries. And um, once more, this is just 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 why this kind of these uh, the, the, these head in the sand forecasts being made by um, the in incumbent oil folks—they're just about to foist onto the IEA with their carbon profit scenario CPS. Um, you know, this is just delusional um, uh, uh, modeling. It's not. It's not analysis at all.